The theme is how to write sermon outlines to motivate people with God's grace. Okay, so we have talked about God's grace, and uh, I want to say that this is not easy to learn immediately. It takes time, but I hope you you really work on it and um, to understand this. Okay, and um, as I said last time, I I, I re, uh, say it uh, briefly now. Many people, because they grew up with the law, so they motiv mostly motivate people by telling them what to do or criticizing them for not doing it. And instead, we should motivate people with God's nature and grace. Nature means His inner quality. When we understand God is full of love, mercy, and kindness, acceptance, wisdom, power, and wonderful planning, and he's generous. All these are his inner qualities. And then his grace. His grace is what he does for us. And for the grace statement, it's always have the us. He blesses us. Jesus died for us. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to work in our lives to change our lives. The Holy Spirit moves us to trust in Jesus as our Savior. The Holy Spirit moves us to obey Him. And the Lord notices how we obey Him and He will reward us greatly. And uh, God is very happy with every little action we do. And everything we do, everything we change, whenever we change in any way, it's all because of God. All because of God. So it's God's work in our lives. Okay, please all send photos in the photo groups, okay? God does all this thing for us. The great statements always have us there. God blesses us. God rewards us. God gives us spiritual gifts. God sees what we are doing. God uh, gives us strength. God motivates us with the Holy Spirit. And God pours His joy and His love into our hearts. So it's what God does for us. God's nature is how He is. So when we understand how God is, when we understand who God is, when we understand how He is, then we will appreciate Him more. We will say, God is so wonderful. I, well, God is a loving God. God is a kind God. God is a generous God. God has all these things prepared for us. So we understand this. Then we'll say, wow, it's so wonderful to have a wonderful God. It's so wonderful. I appreciate that God is so wonderful. So then we'll respond to Him. When we are ourselves are motivated by God's grace, and then when we talk, it's always talking about the goodness of God. Then people will be motivated by God's grace to change. So I hope we all will say, God is so wonderful. God is so good. God is always blessing us. Then we are motivated to change. Okay, so here we talk about how to write uh, sermon outlines showing God's grace. Why is most important that we motivate people with God's nature and grace? Because when people understand that God has the most beautiful nature and wonderful grace, they will delight in God and will want to please God. When we understand how good God is, how wonderful He is, how He is full of grace and mercy and kindness, then we want to obey Him and serve Him. Okay? And then too, when people understand that everything we have and all blessings come from God, they are motivated to obey God. That everything we have and all blessings come from God. Our body comes from God, our life comes from God, heaven comes from God, uh, the Holy Spirit comes from God, the work of the Holy Spirit comes from God. Our ability to obey Him, our ability to, have, to bear fruit all comes from God. So we thank God that He is so wonderful, that He is so wonderful. Three, when people understand that we cannot run away from God, they won't despise God. So this is a warning that we cannot run away from God, nobody can run away from God, that God can seize everything we do. 
He sees our good works. He sees everything we do, and then he also sees our sins. So then we understand that we cannot run away from God. Okay, this is a sermon outline that I suggest. Now you don't have to follow this strictly, but at the beginning, I hope you all follow this at the beginning, and each point has its importance. And、uh, now sometimes some points you don't have to list it as a separate point, but you can include it in other points. So that first we should have the interpretation of the biblical passage, that we explain the passage. Okay, first thing. Ex- and then examples how people don't live out and do live out this particular nature of God. For instance, love as God loves us first. Okay. Now, if we have a sermon, is we love God because God loves us first. Then, how people don't live out. Now, why do I say、uh, that they don't live out this、uh, nature of God first? The reason is so people understand that that. Christians are not necessarily following God. Are not necessarily obeying God. Many Christians are not. To tell them that we should wake up and repent, and then there are some people who are、uh, loving God and loving people is wonderful. So,、uh, how people don't live out this nature of God. So, if we talk about love, we should love as God loves us. Then we should be talking about. That you know, Christians should love each other. But it's true that in many churches, when newcomers walk in the church, nobody pay attention to them. No, nobody cares about them. Or if a Christian, you know, it looks like he is sad, he is unhappy, he is burdened. The other Christians don't care about them. It happens many times that when p- Christians are in trouble, the other Christians don't care about them. They don't. Uh, they don't do anything. They don't respond to them. Or if a person share about his prayer request, that many people just don't respond to them. So I hope that we all will respond to the needs of people. But it's true that not all Christians are doing that. Even though we're saying God is so full of grace, we should be loving God all the time. But it's true that many people are not loving God and not loving people. So we should repent and obey. Now God's nature and grace, nature. God is love, so God is gracious. So that's His nature. His nature, He is love. He cannot but love. He must love. He has no choice but to love. He will always love. He that is His nature. That is the nature of God. God is wonderful. God is a wonderful God that He always wants to love people. He has this nature, and He is gracious. And then His grace, God loves us. God give us the gift to、uh, to bring love to people. That he, we have the spiritual love, spiritual gift that can help us to love people. God reward us when we love Him, and also God give us this nature. God changes our heart. In the beginning, we were not loving God. We are not by nature loving people. We are not full of love. But God changes our life so that we learn to love people. So that's God's grace. He changes our nature so that we learn to love people. And then, why? Why people don't live out this particular nature of God? That because many people are selfish. And they didn't understand that when they love people, God is very happy. And they didn't understand that when they have compassion on people, you know, blessed are those who have compassion and have mercy, because God will have mercy upon them. That they don't take the promises of God seriously. That when we have compassion on people, God will have compassion on us. And but people don't take that seriously. That's why. Now, why do we talk about why people don't live out this nature of God? Because so people know the reason and how to how to、uh, fix it, how to、uh, have this nature of love. Okay, reminder and warning. So we have this warning from God's commandment that is, he who does not love abides in death. So when people don't live in love, they abide in death, and so we need to wake up because there's a warning. And then we need to say how, how, how to live out this particular nature of God, 
how to love God? Well, first we want uh, for any any message that we want to teach people to change, we first want to talk about the old nature, the sinful habit, and then we want to change it. So the sinful habit is that many people just don't care about other people. They go to church because they just want to be blessed. They want to be comforted. They want people to care about them. They don't want to care about other people because people don't have this nature of loving and caring about, about other people. So then we want to work on this and then we say, yes, Lord, I want to uh, repent and I want to find out why I'm so selfish and I want to build up my relationship with God so that I have this nature of love so that I learn to love people. I need to convince myself when I love people, God is very happy with me and He'll bless me. And God will be very happy with me. God will bless my life. God will give me strength. So we, so we can motivate ourselves. This is the how. First, take care of our selfishness, our lack of love. Why I don't have love? Because maybe we grew up in a family without love that we have not learned to love people. Then we repent and then we think of our selfish nature and then we say selfishness will only uh, bring destruction to our life and God is not happy to us, happy with us and then we'll have more and more problems. So we want to repent of our sins and, and uh, not to live in selfishness. And then we want to have a close relationship with God. The more we praise God, the more joy we have. The more we praise God, the more strength we have. And then we learn to love God more. We learn to, uh, learn to love people more, care about people more. And then whenever we are caring for people, loving people, we can appreciate ourselves, applaud ourselves and say, I'm growing today. I'm learning to love people today. I have cared about someone. Thank God for that. That God changes me, so I start to care for people. So I thank God for that gift that He changes me. And then I want to pray for these people who have needs. And I want to find ways, ask God to give me the wisdom to learn to help them, to care about them, how to uh, uh, meet their needs, encourage them. When I see that these people are living, are suffering, then I want to think about what I can do and then I want to uh, love them. So have particular action. In order to love people, we don't just say love people and then people will love others. We need to think about why we are selfish and how to take care of our sins of selfishness, our lack of concern for people. And we start to pray for people. We start to convince ourselves that when we love people, God is very happy. And then we notice, pay attention to the people who are in needs, that who have you know, uh, problems in their spiritual life, who are unhappy that we care about them, that we pray for them, we, we talk to them, and then we care about them. Then we are showing, you know, that they are, we are starting to love them, to know their needs and start to do action. And then we pray for God's wisdom that we can learn to love people more, how we can build up the atmosphere of love in the church, and then whenever we love someone, we said, thank God I'm loving them. And then God is very happy with me. And then we encourage other people to love other people. And then when they are loving other people, we appreciate them and applaud them and say, you're doing well, you're doing well, you're loving other people. And also we want to build up a church atmosphere of loving and caring for each other. I've been to a church. The name of the church is very wonderful. It's called uh, the wonderful body, uh, the, um, let me see, the warm, the warm body of Christ fellowship, the warm body of Christ family uh, fellowship. So it's a, a warm body that the people are really warm and caring. When I went into that church, there are many people that greeted us. And in each message, the pastor t tell the people to say to each other, God loves you, God cares about you, I care about you, I want to do good things to you. So they learn to say different good things to the ch um, members of the church. 
and to encourage each other. So we want to build up an atmosphere of care and concern for people. That's what we want to do in the church. So these are ways, particular ways that we can help people to grow in church, uh, in love for each other. Okay, now let me demonstrate. Now, now pay attention to this. Each point of the message should relate to the theme so that we don't go away from the theme. We stay in the theme. Now, if this theme is love as God loves us, then first we interpret the passage that because it's God who loves us first, therefore we learn to love. And it's God who loves us first and changes us and gives us the nature of love. And then there are people who don't love each other. There are Christians who don't care about other Christians. And uh, it's sad to see that in some churches there's not much love. And then there are some Christians who are willing to love. They are willing to, to uh, give up time and energy and money you know, to love other people. And they give good examples to other people. And then God's nature. So God's nature and grace to motivate us. God is full of love and care. That when we pray to God, we notice that His love and care will come to us. His, we will feel loved when we pray to God. So we know that God is a love of God of love, and God is full of love. And whoever has a close relationship with God, God will put the nature of love into our hearts. And then God's grace is what He does for us. He will, He will give us grace. He will give us love. He changes our heart so that we, want, we, we start to care about people. When Christians are converted, they start to care about people. They start to, to think about the needs of people. They want to do good things to the people. So that's the nature of God, that we want to, that God put this grace into our heart. He puts this nature in our heart that we want to care about people. And He reminds us to care about someone. He reminds us to do evangelism. He reminds us to care about people. So God is always doing these good things to us. He is changing our life. And He rewards us whenever we do good things. So when we talk, talk about God's grace, we can talk about how He changes our life. He put that nature into our heart. And He appreciates what we, we do for Him. And then He rewards us. And He teaches us how to grow. So we talk about different things God does to help us to grow. Okay, and then why people don't love? love. So this is to remind people that when we don't love, then we have um, more problem. Uh, that we, we, we don't have love, then uh, we find out the reason why. The reason why people don't love because many Christians are selfish. That People are by nature selfish. And then when people, many people are converted, they don't change their life. They don't let God change their life. So they are still full of selfishness. And they still think of what they can get from the church and get from the other Christians. They don't think of what they can give. And they don't believe that when they give, when they love, they are benefited. They actually will be rewarded by God and God will benefit their life. And then reminder and warning, when people don't love, then they still live in death. And then God is not happy with them. And M Matthew 25, if they don't do it to the little ones, then they are not doing it to Christ. And those who don't do, it, do anything for Christ at all to other Christians, then they, will, they can end up in hell. In Matthew 25, the third parable about the sheep and the goats. The goats don't do it to to the little ones of Christ, and then they, what happen is, they will, you know, uh, Jesus said to them, you, uh, you go into the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. So those who don't love at all, don't, those who don't care about other people at all, then they will go into the hell fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. So it's warning. So how? We need to tell people how exactly how to learn to love. First, we need to take care of our selfish natures. When we know that we are selfish, then we say, when we are selfish, we actually lose uh, the blessings of God. So we want to learn to love people. And we, we've convinced ourselves, the more we love, the more God is happy with us. So we want to love people more. 
And then we want to pray to God so that God will give us that nature of love. And then whenever we love people, we, we encourage ourselves by saying, Wow, you are loving people today. God is happy with you. So continue to do it. So be happy that we care about people. Even though when people might not have good response, we still appreciate ourselves and say, You're growing. You are changing. Even when people don't listen to you, you still we are still growing. So we're then, then we are appreciating ourselves and then we pay attention to what we do for God and then we say, You're doing well. So this way, the whole message encourages people to love other people. Now, if I change the theme to joy, okay, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So interpretation of the Bible passage is rejoice in the Lord. It's in the relationship of God. It's the relationship of God that gives us joy. And example, now, uh, the Bible tells us to be joyful. But it's true that many Christians are not joyful. They just think about the problems and they are, you know, they are buried in problems. They, many Christians are depressed, unhappy, have emotional problems. And then God's nature and grace. Now, also the positive example is that there are some Christians who are truly joyful. And when we see joyful Christians, they're always happy. We say, wow, this wonderful Christian, he is a joyful Christian. He has a lot of joy. Now, God's nature and grace. God, His nature is He's a joyful God. Because when one sinner repents, the whole heaven rejoices. So God is full of joy, and all the angels are full of joy, and all the saints in heaven are full of joy. When we understand God is a joyful God, and God can give us joy now, Whenever we talk about any nature, we first talk about God's nature of that quality. God is full of joy. And the second, He can, He has the ability to give us joy. He can, has the ability to give joy to Christians. And heaven is full of joy. So we think of ways to describe God's nature. Compared to people, God is always smiling. Now, of course, when He punishes people who don't, repent when he send people to hell then he's not smiling but when he talks to Christians he is joyful he is happy he is smiling and many people go to heaven they, they sense the love of God that flows from Jesus that flows to them and then God's now God's nature is his nature and God's grace is what he does for us so he he give us joy when he when we pray to Him, we'll experience His joy. We'll experience joy flowing in the heart. When we praise God, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. And then we can experience joy. So He gives us joy. And He gives us the anointing to pass the joy to other people. That we can pray for people and they can experience joy. And He also teaches us, the Holy Spirit teaches us to be joyful. And He works on our heart to help us repent and take care of our problems of depression, of unhappiness. When we are unhappy, when we are depressed, God works in our heart not to look at the problems, to look at God's grace. God gives us grace. Christians should be experiencing God's grace, and so we should be joyful because God is helping us to be joyful. And then when we are joyful, especially when we delight in God, then God will give us the desires of our heart, that He give us the des what we desire in our heart. And also God will make us ride on the high places that we will go higher and higher. Okay, so God can give us joy. And then why people don't have joy? Because, now here is why. Now at the beginning, the example is just saying that man many Christians just don't have joy. And then why Christians don't have joy? Christians don't have joy because many Christians just look at the problems of other people. And they look at their own problems. They look at the negative sides of things. And they criticize other people. They criticize other people and they criticize themselves and they say, I'm not doing well. So they are unhappy. Okay? So when we understand that, then we want to take care of that criticism, this critical spirit. And then reminder and warning is the warning that when we live in depression, we will have no joy, no strength, 
and then we will not be enjoying a Christian life and we won't have much we won't have much strength so how do we have joy first we want to take care of the negative problems the negative problem would be like we have the habit of looking at problems of people and of ourselves we have a critical spirit and the critical spirit doesn't help anything so we understand that we want to change that we want to have a positive spirit we want to count the blessings of God look at how God has blessed us in many different ways how God has sent the Holy Spirit to work in our lives how God has changed our lives how God has given us joy how God is working in our lives so we look at how God is look, doing all these things and then we thank God for that and then we can have more joy and we also want to put down our burdens and praise God and worship God thank you Father thank you Father just meditate on what God, God has done in our lives that God has given us joy and peace God has changed our nature God has given us strength and given us, given us spiritual gifts and, and uh, given us growth in Jesus Christ all this we say I'm thankful to you Lord I'm thankful I'm very happy that I have all these blessings so I thank God for that and then we want to uh, choose to rejoice now what does it mean to choose to rejoice that we want to you know instead of uh, thinking about the problems we want to choose to think about the good things of God I choose to think about God's goodness, God's kindness, God's gifts, and God's appreciation of us, and God's reward, and God's heaven, especially heaven. Oh, one day we'll be in heaven. There's no more sickness, no more sadness, and we'll be joyful every day. We'll be full, filled with love every day. We'll enjoy God and enjoy each other all the time. It's so wonderful. Thank God, thank God, I can go to heaven one day. So I appreciate God for that, and I want to live in God's joy all the time. So then the whole message would talk about joy. It doesn't go away from the theme of joy. The whole message is on joy. So I hope that our whole message will not stray away. Sometimes people, people when they, uh, uh, you know, preach. They would go from one thing to another, and then when sometimes when they have examples, it's too long. They tell a long story, and the people might forget about the theme. Now, if we want to use an example, just make it brief and to the point. Now, if we want to have a, 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 a sharing about joy in the message of joy, we can talk about how one time we brought someone to Christ and then we are very joyful when we brought someone to Christ when I see someone change I help someone to grow in Jesus and the person changes and then I'm filled with joy so when I obey God I'm filled with joy when I see the fruit of the Holy Spirit I, when I see the fruit of my evangelism I, I, I'm filled with joy so I know that uh, I want to be to be fruitful in Christ I want to help people more help people spiritually I want to care for people and then I have more joy when I see people change I have more joy and also sometimes when we praise God 